Well, hey there guys, let's just go ahead and jump into today's video because I have a feeling it's going to be a long chatty one, so let's not waste a lot of time with a really long unnecessary intro. Let's get into the tea. This is exactly the reason why you wanna be following me on Instagram if you're not already, so that when I do Q and A's and assumption videos, you get to make sure that you get your questions answered as well. So I'm gonna go through as many as I can um, sort of as quickly as I can. So some of these are a mix of assumptions and some of them are questions, so let's just dive in. Kristen's assumption is that you're the life of the parte. Heck yeah, girl, you know I am. Sarah's assumption is that I am on the verge of painting those tile floors. You know, you're not wrong. <laughs> I can't afford to. Um, and so, no, I'm not on the verge of doing it, but do I fantasize about it every day? Yes. Yes, I do. Kara Fisher's assumption is that I have all my crap together. That's very kind of you, Kara, but not even close to correct. Kai's assumption is that I have more spare time or self-care time now that Dan has the kids sometimes. And I can understand why that would be an assumption because I think I probably would make the same assumption, but the reality is no. Um, I have three jobs to be able to stay in this house for you know a couple years. Um, and the result of that, especially with the fact that I, the kids are now at home uh, doing virtual learning, that I'm kind of quarterbacking between two very young kids to make sure that they can you know, stay on task with schoolwork, also look after Brighton, who's 20 months old, um, and who is very close to walking. And you know, anyone who has kids that age knows that they are constantly getting into things and endangering themselves. So between you know, virtual schooling and taking care of Brighton and running my three jobs, a lot of stuff of like errand running, groceries, all that kind of stuff um, becomes very difficult. And so often on the uh, times when Dan does have the kids, uh, I spend, you know, if he has them for two hours in a particular morning, um, I usually spend that time either catching up on work that I've fallen behind with or uh, running a bunch of errands, um, like groceries and that sort of book, you know, appointments for myself. So um, I don't have a lot of downtime. Teeny drinks, teeny tea's assumption is that it takes forever for me to do my hair because it's so thick. Girl, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, my hair is so thick and it takes forever to dry, which is why I generally only wash it once a week because like, I, same user had the assumption that I am religious, but due to life experiences, I'm more modern than most would think. I would agree with that. I am definitely an apprentice of Jesus. I think some aspects of the way that humans live out Jesus's message through traditional churches um, is problematic, both from a compassion point of view, from a social justice point of view, um, from a human rights point of view, I am uncomfortable and take issues with a lot of um, issues with the church, uh, but it certainly doesn't diminish my relationship with God or being an apprentice of Jesus. Amy wants to know, do Dan and I still have a good relationship as friends for your kids? Absolutely. Um, I am very blessed that Dan and I have a very, very amicable co-parenting relationship. Chloe assumes that I have a secret magical plant care routine because your fiddly fig is gorgeous. Estelle is a full-bodied woman and she is a real thing of beauty. But no, I don't have any secrets necessarily. A, a while ago, I, like, I think I was pregnant with Brighton. Was I pregnant with Brighton? Um, I did a plant care and a plant tour video. Um, it is long overdue for me to do an update. So I do have that planned to film that video. I just don't know if it should belong on Instagram or YouTube. I don't know if enough of you are interested to make it a YouTube video, but let me know in the comments. Was your divorce really that amicable? It seems impossible. Our divorce really was that amicable. I think most of it is because we didn't have much to argue over. Um, I wasn't asking for any of you know his savings or financials that he had accumulated because of his job. Him and I were in agreement in terms of like a custody schedule. Um, really as much as he wants to see the kids he can. So there was nothing to argue about over that. And in terms of child support, I just asked for the table amount, which is a calculator that the government puts out where I put in my income, he puts in his income, and they give you a low, medium, and high range of what um, the courts would decide child support would be. And so we just used the basic table amount for that. So there really wasn't anything to argue over. And you know, ultimately, 
I want to have a positive co-parenting relationship with my kid's dad more than I want any furniture in the house or any amount of, you know, money that I may or may not have been entitled to. It, um, it just wasn't worth arguing over for me. After everything, you know, had taken place and come to life, I really came to a place of a calm knowing that I had done everything possible to prevent a divorce. Um, and so I could kind of walk away in good conscience. Kylie Dawn says that her assumption is that I get a lot of unwarranted hate. It really burns my britches. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I have, especially since becoming a single mom and kind of really evaluating what's actually important in life, I have way less time or desire to care what, you know, trolls think of me. So I just, it really doesn't phase me like it used to. But yeah, I mean, I definitely get hate that's unsolicited or, um, you know, <laughs> factually inaccurate. But honestly, I just don't feel the need to defend myself. It's, it's like, you know, if people have already decided that I am an elephant, it is not my job to convince them that I am a hippopotamus, you know? It's just like, okay, if you think I'm an elephant, I guess think I'm an elephant. It doesn't really affect my life. Fuzzy Peach says, you need control in all aspects of your life and you get bored easily. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I think that is definitely one of my biggest personal struggles is that I do struggle with control. Um, as I have mentioned before, I, because of my childhood trauma, um, I have come to realize that I really equate control with safety. And when I feel out of control within myself or within my relationships, it feels very unsafe to me, um, which is not, you know, objective reality, but it definitely was and is my subjective reality, which then obviously plays out in my life. So I have been working really hard since becoming a single mom to um, re-change my thought patterns and change the neural pathways in my brain to take to court the fact that control is safety and lack of control is not safety. I'm, you know, taking that to court and really challenging my brain that has, that has held that negative core belief. Um, and I think I have come a long way. I certainly haven't mastered it. You know, the, the control equals safety thing still lights up for me. Uh, but I'm, I'm better than I was and I am um, going to be better than I am and that's all that matters. You have everything figured out and you're always put together. I washed my hair last night and that was the first time in I don't know how long, at least a week and a half, and um, haven't shaved my armpits in a week. Don't remember if I brushed my teeth today. First time I've worn makeup in three weeks. <laughs> How do you manage time for your own projects with three kids? Uh, the reality is right now, not very well. I have, you know, no choice but to continue working and I have no choice but to continue, you know, supporting my kids through virtual schooling. And the result is, you know, both of those cannot happen simultaneously, effectively, when I'm a single parent and I'm the only one, you know, on deck. Um, and I'm the only one watching the kids throughout the week. Um, and then, you know, weekend. And so the reality of what my life looks like right now is, you know, I get up at 6.30 to make sure I get my workout in to, you know, get the positive endorphins flowing. And then my primary job throughout the day is being a mom to my kids while they're virtually schooling and support them and watch Brighton and try and do as much work as I can piecemeal throughout that um, in a way where I can still stay present for my kids. And then the reality is when I put them to bed at seven or eight o'clock for, for my boys, from eight until about midnight, sometimes 1 a.m., I'm then doing my work day, uh, where I'm editing videos, sometimes filming, working on emails, um, you know, thumbnails, working on my programs that I create, my website, working on West Cottage, my pottery store, which is this, 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 this close to going live. What I am currently doing right now is certainly not sustainable, uh, but it's one of those things where it's like, when you're a single mom and you're, amidst a pandemic, you just, you do what you need to do to get it done. And, um, it does mean life is pretty chaotic right now. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. I think nobody's life looks how they expected it to look, uh, right now. And I am blessed beyond blessed that I get to have kids that I get to be an entrepreneur and I get to work for myself and I get to work from home because of you guys. And I think my gratitude for that 
supersedes my fatigue when it's, you know, 11 30, 12 30 at night and I'm still working. Uh, that even though you love your kids to death, you buy more cheaply for them. Yeah. And I'm unapologetic about that. Certain things, I definitely look for quality. If I know it's something that's going to last my kids for a long time, then certainly I will look for quality. Um, when it comes to things like clothing or stuff that they are going to outgrow in a fairly short period of time, uh, it is not worth investing in them in the same way it would be investing in myself. If we're, if we're talking about t-shirts, for example, most of Cohen's wardrobe is hand-me-down from Ford, thank goodness. Uh, but you know, if, if, we, if that wasn't even in the equation, if we were just looking at t-shirts, I can wear a t-shirt pretty much, I could buy a t-shirt and if it's a high quality one, wear it for the rest of my life. Cohen will outgrow it in a year. And so it, it's not very fiscally responsible to make sure that you know they have the same quality of items that I have for things that don't make sense. Things that make sense that they can have for a long period of time, like their lunch boxes and their backpacks, those are things they can easily use for years and years and years to come. So those I do invest in, but the things that they are gonna outgrow quickly, then no, I definitely buy you know on the cheap. Um, and for myself, it's more environmentally friendly, ethically grounded, um, and fiscally responsible to uh, invest in higher quality pieces, which doesn't always mean expensive, but higher quality pieces that are going to last a lifetime so I don't have to replace them. You thought about divorce many times before, but were scared of what it would look like to others. I desperately wanted things to work. Ellie has decided to join us, so unfortunately you are in, it is inevitable that you will hear deep Ellie breathing sounds for the remainder of this video. Um, I'm sorry. So yes, I think anybody who has been through divorce knows, hopefully knows, that it is not a decision that you make hastily. Um, and it is, is something that takes you a long time to, uh, to get to, to realize that you have exhausted all other options. Um, and so yes, and I would definitely say that you know, religious guilt and societal pressure and certainly my job online made that exponentially more difficult. Um, so yeah, I would say that's correct. Muffinstein18 says, you're the bad type of Christian, sad face. Um, to be honest, I don't know what you consider the good type of Christian. Um, I would hazard based on that tone, you and I have a very different opinion on what makes a good or bad Christian. So um, by your standards, Probably. Jen Quinn, is that how you would say that? I think this is probably the most accurate description I've ever heard of having an online presence, and I kind of want to like cross stitch it and put it on my wall somewhere. Brilliant, and yes. Um, I am definitely not going to show you all of my, you know, behind the scenes struggles because, you know, A, who wants to see that? Everyone has their own struggles going on. They don't want to watch other people's struggles, and those that do want to watch other people struggle, they're not the audience that I'm trying to attract. Um, and so I definitely share the real and the raw. I think I share a lot about my own shortcomings and struggles, but um, I'm definitely um, the director of what and how much of things I share online. And I am very comfortable with the boundaries that I have set. Uh, in line with that, <laughs> you have uh, healthy boundaries with people. Yes. And I think it took me a long time to realize that setting those healthy boundaries is not selfish, it's self-care and it's self-loving. And so I think it took me a long time to uh, be comfortable setting those boundaries, but at this point in my life, yes and yes and yes. That Ellie is your faith pet. Don't you dare let Bernie hear you say that. No, I don't know. I think Bernie is is a an icon, a beacon of what manhood should look like. And I think Ellie is a gorgeous beast. I think they bring you know different stuff to the table but I love them both madly and deeply. Have you thought at all about stopping YouTube? Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, several times. Um, I think at this point, uh, thanks to the glory and beauty that age and wisdom and therapy <laughs> provide, I think I have finally come to a place where um, the content I make is the content that my audience wants to see, is also in line with uh, my boundaries of what I am or am not going to share. I think I have finally found balance in that. Um, and so, you know, I don't see my YouTube channel going anywhere anytime soon um, as a result of that, but, but definitely I've had times, many. Also, do you already know when you will open your West Cottage shop? Can't wait to see all your creations. Thank you. 
Um, I am trying very hard to get West Cottage up and running as quickly as possible. The sorting out the shipping is, is honestly what has taken the longest time because I definitely don't want to overcharge for shipping, but I also don't want to uh, get myself into a position where I'm losing money on the pieces I'm selling because of shipping costs. Um, and so figuring all of that out and creating a website took longer than expected, but I'm really hoping in the next week or two that West Cottage will be up and running. And if, for those of you who are like, what the heck is she talking about? I have a one of a kind handmade stoneware pottery um, e-commerce store uh, that I will be setting up of all the pottery that I make. And um, the website is pretty much ready, but it's not live yet. Uh, but I do have a newsletter where you guys can sign up and you will get advanced access to the website when things are available for sale. For sale. There was an issue with, uh, the newsletter was open for a couple days and then there was an issue with it. I'm really gonna try and get that resolved and have a proper link down below for you. Do you have any advice for someone who feels stuck in life due to finances and taking care of elderly parents? Yes, two, three, four, five million things to say. Um, I do offer some workbooks, both about prioritizing self-care, how to do that um, in a way that is either free or very low cost. Um, and it also kind of walks you through the process of realizing that self-care is not selfish. It's actually really important. Um, so I have a workbook all about that. I also have a workbook all about um, uh, self -pos creating and establishing positive self-talk and self-love. And I also have an ebook all about budgeting and financing. So um, I will have all the resources that I have available for sale. Um, they're all under $10. Uh, I have I'll have a link um, in the description for you guys to check out. I assume you have a college degree. I do. I have a college degree. Um, I also have a university degree and a uh, post-grad degree as well. I assume you never eat fast food or at least less than two times a month. I had McDonald's three nights ago. McDonald's uh, egg McMuffin, no meat. <sighs> probably two times a month is probably accurate, both from a financial and health standpoint. Yeah but I do eat it. You have a potty mouth when the camera's off and the kids aren't around. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, I do. And I kind of don't care. The last time I said in a video, I think it was uh, when I did the video with my best friend Veronica, that I got some emails of people being like, I will pray that God will purify your mouth. And I'm like, please don't. God and I have talked and we're cool with it. Like, <laughs> I think God has big societal and systemic issues to at hand than whether or not you know, I curse. I, I really, yeah, I don't curse around my kids. I certainly don't curse on camera, but in my offline life, I do enjoy a good F-bomb and I don't feel any guilt about that whatsoever. I used to feel a lot of guilt about having a potty mouth because I was like, good Christians don't swear. But then I realized that a lot of the good Christians um, in church have, you know, their own struggles and their own things that they uh, face. Um, and so I really came to call into question what being a good Christian really looks like. Um, and I realized that, you know, some of my favorite Christians are the ones who swear. So you are a perfectionist. Yes, I am a recovering perfectionist, but yes. Thank you, childhood trauma. You tend to stay quiet instead of confrontational. I would say this is true, uh, but I definitely have a line. I think I am much more comfortable being confrontational when it comes to standing up for my kids or family members or uh, friends than I am standing up for myself. Eleanor, that was a big sigh. Although I'm getting better at that. I, I would say, yeah, I, I don't like confrontation, but I am able to stick up for myself and assert myself when need be. Would you have more children with a future partner? I don't think so. I mean, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. And uh, you know, I'm 37, so for me to meet someone, first of all, amidst a global pandemic, but then also get to a point where we are, you know, cohabitating and blending lives and, you know, Dan is cool with things and the kids are cool with things to be ready enough to have kids. I mean, I think I would be too old. I also just, I, I don't feel the yearning to have more kids. I also, to be honest, don't know if I would ever get married again. I may, if the right life situation presented itself, you know, cohabitate with someone. I would love to find a partner to, you know, have life undulate with and, and to, to have, you know, my person that I, I do life with. Uh, but I don't know that I would ever get married again.
How are you coping with the current lockdown situation? Again, I hope you are all well. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I'm like, like, I'm like totally fine. Like I'm like, I'm totally, totally fine. If you could only have three items on a desert island apart from your kids, what would they be? Um, access to a cup of tea, one outfit of comfortable loungewear, and um, endless reading material. What do you tell your kids about your mom? <laughs> this is an ongoing um, consideration for me that as my kids get older, you know, what and how much information I share. Uh, my kids know that I had a mom. My kids know her name and that's how they refer to her. My kids know that she died and that's kind of all they know. And I am in charge of carrying her legacy on in the memory of, of you know, my kids and stuff. And so um, I take, yes, I take that, one more. Oh yeah, not done yet. I take that seriously and I don't think there's any benefit to telling my kids how hard things were. I just don't see how that benefits them. You know, at this point, I don't see a need to share any of that information. That may change as they get older and their own life circumstances require them to know more. Or, you know, I come to a place where I realize they should know more, but I just don't think it's um, helpful or necessary. And so um, at this point, that's all they know. Did you get the kids a Nintendo Switch? This is so fun. Oh, I just spat. I really underestimated how many of you would be ticked that I was not willing to spend hundreds of dollars on a four and a six year old uh, for a piece of technology that is not essential. And in fact, has been proven to be not good for a developing brain. Some of some of you were right ticked about that. Funny to report, I ended up finding a used one on Facebook Marketplace, and so um, yeah, they they do have one now. But wow, what a surprising trigger for a um, small percentage of you. You don't have a lot of toys in your house. Yeah, I don't, and I'm cool with that. My kids, there there is an endless amount of of things for my kids to occupy themselves with and explore and. Um, use their imagination. I don't think that quantity of toys dictates quality of play, and that's just a personal belief that I have. You don't follow trends and don't have a personal style. Sorry, but you would be more interesting. I'm so sorry that I'm not interesting to you, Rochelle. I clearly do not share the same trends that you do, um, so I'm, I'm sorry that offends you and, and does not meet your expectations. <laughs> I'm cool with it though. How do you feel you differ from the misconceptions about the divorcee perpetuated in pop culture? What a fantastic question. I think there is this preconceived notion that um, women become gold diggers and are trying to, you know, bleed their ex-husbands dry financially, emotionally, you know, all the ease. And I think that is not the case for me and certainly not the case for many women. You know, Dan and I really co-parent very well um, and people don't want to accept that as truth. I think people have a very hard time accepting that as truth, uh, which is a shame. And I think, you know, another way that we differ is I really hope that Dan meets his person. And I, I am excited to see who comes into this, you know, family fold that we have. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that her and I can have a great relationship. I mean, we don't have to like go get matching pedicures every Saturday, but I, I, you know, I'm excited to have another person in, in the family. And I think it's wonderful the idea that, you know, if there is times where my kids are not physically around me, I think it's amazing to have a thought that they will still have a, you know, mother figure around when I'm not there. You know, I hope Dan finds his person. It wasn't me, but that doesn't mean that she's not out there and it doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve it. I really believe the more the merrier. My assumption is that you're tall and my question is what is your faith thing about yourself? I think my favorite thing about myself is um, my resiliency and uh, yes, I am tall. I am 5'9", maybe 5'10", I don't know. Sheila, I love you, Sheila. Uh, do you have a sweet tooth and if so, how do you control it? Uh, yes, I do and I control it by not controlling it. <laughs> I am a girl who loves me some chocolate and uh, I don't want to deny myself the sweet things of life. I have to ration because I do not have self-control. It was one of the fruits of the spirit that I have not been afforded. You don't socialize with many non-Christians. Uh, not true. In fact, most of my friends are not Christian. You work really hard to maintain a calm and nurturing environment for your kids. Absolutely. I try my darndest to give my kids the safety, security, and love that I did not receive growing up.
Any plans on changing your name back post-separation? A good question. No, uh, because I want to have the same last name as my kids. I assume spinning clay is both fueling, uh, sorry, fueling, fulfilling and therapeutic for you. Yes. It is like part therapeutic, part meditative, part creative outlet, um, hopefully part revenue sourcing career. Um, I absolutely love it. Assumption is that you are totally hilarious and always laugh at your own jokes. I definitely always laugh at my own jokes, which is totally a faux pas, but like I do, I find myself very funny. <laughs> Clearly, uh, but no, I am funny and it's, it, it's funny because uh, when I became friends with Melissa from Clean My Space, that's one of the first things she said to me when her and I became friends outside of like a YouTube colleague uh, perspective. She was like, you're so funny and you don't show that on YouTube. Um, and a lot of my friends, when I ask them like, what's the difference between what you see online and what you see offline? And they're always like, you're way funny, you're offline and you're like scared to show your sense of humor because people get their knickers in a knot so easily online. Um, and I would say that is very true. Um, I think I care less now than I used to. And so I'm showing that humor side more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm funny. You are happier now than you ever were. That is true in so many ways. You are more shy in real life than it seems online. You know, it's true. Um, I'm an introvert and I know that that would be shocking to a lot of you because I seem like I would be very extroverted, but you know, you are watching this and you're aware that you're watching this and you know, theoretically, I'm aware that thousands of people will watch this, but um, right now I'm sitting in my living room with a microphone and a camera and that's who I'm talking to. Once I'm comfortable with people, um, like the friends that I've had for a long time or like, you know, life partners or whatever, once I'm comfortable with people, I'm not shy at all. In fact, I'm like very silly, can be life of the party, like, but in situations where I'm not really comfortable or in new situations or social situations, I, and very uncomfortable and definitely an introvert and definitely shy. I think sometimes I come across as like cold and maybe having a bit of like RBF, uh, but it's just shyness and awkwardness. How did you cope with separation, divorce and having a young baby at the same time? It was very, very hard. Brighton was about four months old, five months old, somewhere around there um, when Dan and I made the decision that the marriage could no longer continue. And then, as I mentioned in, in my um, year-end review video, uh, when Dan moved out, COVID hit. And so um, it also was very hard. Um, it's hard to be a single mom. It's hard to go through a divorce, even an amicable one. Um, so to go through that amidst a global pandemic with having a baby at home um, was definitely, definitely difficult. You had a hoe face. Caitlin, how very dare you. Uh, instead of yelling, you have conversations with your kids when they misbehave. Yes, I can definitely talk sternly, but I am not a yeller. How do you cope on days when you feel like you failed as a mom? I think we all feel it sometimes. Yes, we all do. I try really hard to talk to myself and not listen to myself, if that makes sense. You know, I'm honest with myself with my shortcomings, but I also am able to give myself grace um, and realize that I can't be all things to all people all the time and that um, ultimately I'm giving my kids my best and my best needs to be good enough. Do you speak French? Un peu. I understand more than I speak. I then had roommates for a couple years that were francophone and French was their first language. And so I was able to kind of pick up some of it. And for the most part, I could understand if you know their parents came over and they were speaking in French, I could understand what people were saying. I just, I'm not always able to bring to mind like how you would respond. You are happy, fulfilled, and know your worth. Yes, and it took me 37 stinking years to get here, uh, but yes, and it is my dream and wish and prayer that every single woman gets to that place too. And I think society does a really hard, determined job of making that very difficult for women in a myriad of ways. But I had to fight really hard to get where I am and I am proud of where I am. All of the programs that I create and the workbooks and the videos I make is with the hope and the desire 
to inspire and encourage and educate you guys um, on how you can do the same in your own life, not because I am a guru, but because I have seen what the research that I have done and the work that I have done, I have seen the difference it makes in my life. And why wouldn't I want to share that with other people? I don't think you need to be a guru to help others. I think it is our calling to help and encourage wherever we, excuse me, wherever we can. That is today's questions. I think that's a good place to end it today. Thank you guys so much for sending in such thoughtful and great questions. I really appreciated it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'ma just put it out there one more time. You need to go and follow me over on Instagram. We just had a whole marathon on naming a new plant in my house. If you're wondering the type of content you're missing, maybe it's not that worth it for you. <laughs> Definitely check out West Cottage. I am hoping to have that launch as soon as humanly possible. And uh, I love you guys. See you next week. Bye.